are these people? Um, speaking of y- Utes, um, you know, wh- the things are happening on college campuses. Colin, have you seen? Have you been looking at that? I'm sure your feed is inundated with, with stuff about this. Yes. Um, so we're going to talk about the secret task college force here in a second. Um, but you know, uh, you, you'll see why and how it relates, but you know, first we're going to look at things happening over at Columbia, right? Columbia university students have taken over the school. Columbia has announced classes will become fully virtual for the rest of the year as Palestinian protests continue. You know, this is, this is the terrifying, the antiseptic protests, um, you know, just, just dancing, just having I a good old time. I thought they were like, it sounds so dramatic that we're going to suspend only virtual, like, it's final season. They're only going right. to be in school for two or three <laughs> yeah. more weeks because of it, they graduate or they're done with classes for the spring semester, so. Yeah. Shut up, like, so dramatic, Shut like. Up. Shut up. <laughs> just shut up. It just gives them two more. It just gives them two two or three at most two to four more weeks on campus. And then, you know, either they leave or depending what's going to happen, who knows what's going to happen yeah. over the summer. But well, so dramatic. This is the kind of stuff that's actually happening to those people that were dancing. This is not at that specific university, another university, right? We're at Cal Poly Humboldt, right? I don't know if people know where that's at. Um, but this is the kind of stuff they had to deal with. I mean, I think, I think we get the gist on that. You know, yeah, we have that as a shirt. Go buy yes. it on our store. We have yes, that we do. Based on a shirt. I I and then what is it? Indie Indie News dot store. I think is the thing for that. Um, Indie Health. Us. <laughs> it should be. I think that's what it is. We got a thing at the end of the show. We'll we'll plug it. Um, but you know, this is a, that same place, right? Cow Humboldt. Look what they we actually have to deal with. This is what that turns into. It's like they start dragging people out. (laughs) Anyway, I just thought that was funny. Um, I got hit with a water water bottle, Colin. He got hit with a water bottle. You know. <laughs> uh, why is that so funny? I had a, a funny noise. Um, anyway, uh, oh boing! Someone, someone made this because of that. And y'all work fast. Y'all people work way too fast. Y'all cannot be putting that out so quickly. Yeah. Um, but anyway, um. Menar Adley, police just broke up and arrested all the students of the University of Minnesota. Right, so Minnesotan universities are also in this problem. Right, we're gonna we're gonna get to more of that in a bit. Um, but yeah, charging them with trespassing and banning all students from campus for one year. So fun, right? Nice, nice of them. Yeah. Um. So the University of Minnesota just ordered janitors to shut off the water supply there. They locked the bathrooms and the locked doors to Kaufman Union, where pro-Palestine protesters set up an encampment and whatnot. Um, doors to Kaufman University lock at 11 p.m., but I'm watching janitors lock up at 8. When asked why they're locking up this early, they said these are orders from the administration because of the encampment. I mean, what does that sound like you, Colin? I mean, that sounds like some fucking 
what they do in Israel. They shut out the water supplies. They lock the doors. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, right. So anyway, uh, breaking early today, it leaked that Columbia University threatened its negotiations to sick the National Guard on its own students. The message from the CU president, Manoush Shafiq, seems to confirm such as she proclaims that negotiations have a deadline of 12 a.m. This is an egregious threat to the student body. Manoush Shafiq is dancing with the threat of another Kent state. He would rather have her students face deadly force than to divest from Israel's genocide against Palestinians. Keep eyes on Colombia. Um, but yeah, there's this, there's this letter, you know, pretty much says, I'm grateful for the support of the city and state officials, right? That kind of stuff. They're, she's pretty much looking for a National Guard assistance at this point. Um, which I think she got. Um, so <clears throat> a friend of the show, Brett Wilkins, is also being brought into this in regards to someone that uh, called out some Zionist on campus, right? And they're blaming him. You know, we just heard that resistance is justified chant, right? You know, the co-chair right. of San Francisco Bernie Krat says Hamas is resistance whether you like their methods or not. Right? There's old Brett Wilkins. Look, someone says, say his name and tags Brett. He's been on the forefront of this increasingly evil cult for several years. He's one of the head vampires. Here's what it led to. I'm not hating Jews. They say I'm protesting a government. We, we've been saying that. I'm glad you've been listening. Maybe actually believe us. Something like that. I don't know. Um, anyway, Brett, Brett Wilkins responds, say his name, say it, and while you're at it, say Rappaport, my Jewish mother's name, you know, which is just <laughs> funny, just funny. I'm sure you love seeing that Michael Rappaport guy going around, makes you feel all homely right. and whatnot. Um, anyway, um, shout out to Brett, we love you. <laughs> stop antisepticism. Hamas's resistance, Brett Wilkins, right? Brett being brought up on this again. Anyway, he replies, anyone who wants to thwart the establishment of a Palestinian state has to support bolstering Hamas and transferring money to Hamas. This is part of our strategy to isolate the Palestinians in Gaza from the Palestinians in the West Bank. Benjamin Netanyahu. So... And I tagged in this, you didn't do it, but I tagged actual clips... Of, of him saying that Israeli officials basically saying, "Oh yeah, in order to prevent a two-state solution, we're funding Hamas." Yeah. So Hamas. So those always... of you who follow me, so those of you who follow me on Twitter, find that clip. Yeah. And send it to your Zionist friends. Yeah. Ooh. So a little closer to home for you. We're gonna head to New York, right? Over over here, and look what's happening there. Look, they've got they've got those pig shaped human objects there. Um, you know, dragging people, peaceful protesters away from things, right? So this is this is what your tax dollars pay for, people. By the way, I don't know if you know. Um, you know, I mean. College students. Right. That's that's what they that's how all this force is needed for. So and not just the students, Care Bear. Guess what? They're taking the Teachers. staff too. Why New York University faculty members being arrested? Academics aren't allowed to oppose the hashtag Gaza genocide. Is this the land of the free? And in front of his own office, he says, "I'm be- I'm being arrested." You know, so honestly, I'm getting PTSD. Ah, uh, yes, this brings this bringing me back to four years ago during the George Floyd protest. This is exact what I had to go through then. It's exactly what these college students are going through. They brought out counterterrorism, Colin. <laughs> like, 
what is this counter strike what are we doing <laughs> like anyway yeah, Lafredo over the gray zone, counterterrorism NYPD forces are now arriving to Columbia campus. Right? So I brought this, Colin. Why why would people be afraid of of Columbia University students being so vocal about this? We thinks. Well, this lady's gonna tell us. Um you know why Columbia University is freaking out about this protest right now? It's because the kids involved aren't just working class, hardworking kids. Those are kids with privilege. Those are the kids of Congress members and business execs getting arrested. That's a big deal. Columbia University is where the next generation of leaders is supposed to be born. The next generation of oppressors. And now we have all of these young, rich kids using their privilege to fight against a system. Yeah. Of course the system's freaking out. And that's not to say that there aren't students that are on that lawn right now risking everything, because there are. But a lot of those kids are weaponizing their privilege against the system that gave them that privilege. And that's also pretty badass. There's another reason too that Sabi mm. brought up, uh, those of you who watch her. She mentioned, well, Columbia is based, Columbia, like that whole part of New York. Yeah. Heavily Jewish. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So the fact that it started, so like, I, I don't want to say it's like the epicenter, but like, there's a lot of Jewish influence at Columbia. Number one. Number two, the, how... The reason why South Africa, uh, like the apartheid in South Africa was diminished was due to college students divesting, pushing co colleges to divest from South Africa. So, of course, this was many, uh, several years ago, many decades ago. But, like, the idea that this is happening again, again, you know, with Israel, you know, that's not good. And the fact that now that it's starting to spread on different con and, you know, as we said, you know, they're going to be, th the semester is almost over. Yeah. And then you're going to have college students with free time. Yeah. Over the summer to, you know, like Playing. to continue doing this if they right. choose to. Yeah. So, you know, they're only going to, I can only predict that this is only going to get worse over the next few months. And God forbid, you know, this will kind of run into both the Republican and Democratic conventions over the summer as well. Well, because speaking of Jewish influence at Columbia, uh, do you, have you seen this guy? This, uh, uh, I know. David, I, yes. I think, I think that's it. Last I mean, I'm not going to play Columbia University is much of him. Support for Hamas. Hold Hamas. the signs saying, El Qassam Brigade, your next target, pointing at Jewish students. So Press here for you doubt. have it. Press well, X for doubt. U.S. citizens are being held hostage in Gaza by Hamas and by the Hamas. Islamic Jihad, yeah. you have students yeah. at Columbia University and faculty oh. at Columbia University who are cheering on Hamas. Hamas. Everything's Hamas. Hamas is all around you, in the trees, inside you. They're in your heart. Okay? Omnipresent. Um, I mean, this is just... And we'll call on the government. Unhinged. Yeah, unhinged nonsense. Supporters. We believe in love. We believe in free speech. But we believe that enough is enough. Bullshit. Bullshit, I say. You do not no, you do not believe in love because if you do, you'd be more concerned what's happening to Gazans right now. Well, you do not care. Uh, ironically, um, you know, Columbia University professor and former Israeli soldier Shai Divide Davadai. Davadai, yeah. Yeah, um, Blue Abadi Davadai that has family connections to Israel's weapons production. His father, Eli yeah. Davidai, is an Israeli businessman who served as general manager of the company ARC, 
which provides components for weapons used by the Israeli military. So, yeah. Right. I mean, useful. So, also, remember, who else, wor- do you, who else works at Columbia? The witch herself. Uh, yes. Yeah. So, Columbia is a school with, an, it's an ivy, right? So, it has a lot of influence. So the fact that it's more or less become an epicenter for what's going on right now is a big deal. So well, that's why they're scared. That's why, you know, we see all these Zionists like popping out of the work, work basically being like ranting and raving and crying like babies over what's happening, you know, and, the th- and it's just funny because four years ago, you know, and I tweeted this earlier today, four years ago, at, at that time, we had to wear masks. But yeah. everyone was saying you need to wear a mask because you're going to get docs, you need it to be safe, and all this kind of stuff. And this is what those students are doing because they know these motherfuckers are essentially trying to dox them, God forbid. And these people are like, well, they're wearing masks because they're Hamas, and all this other kind of bullshit. <laughs> uh, sorry, Hamas. So, um... <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, speaking of speaking of crybabies, sometimes it doesn't work out. Sometimes things don't work out. Care Bear. Media in is the university keeping the media out. This is the CEO of the university. Are we not letting the media in? What? You back up, please. My card has been deactivated. Why? Can you back up, please? Uh huh. Wait, what? Your what? What happened, Professor? What happened? Wait, no. wait, wait, wait. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Everybody, my card has been deactivated. This Boy. is the this is Cass Holloway, the COO. I'm a victim. My card's been deactivated. I'm a victim. I'm a victim because my card doesn't work. Please recognize my victimhood. Um So yeah. Um I just thought that was fun for him taking a nail. Um, you know. But anyway, don't worry. He still has places that play him like I24. You know? This is an important topic. This is not just about Colombia. This is what? every U.S. college. They, are, they have said Hamas they are going to bring three, down Colombia first, two, and then as a domino effect, one, all other universities. But I want to make clear one thing before I talk about my own actions. What we're seeing now at Colombia, and I don't use this word lightly, we're not seeing ideological war. We're not seeing support for terrorism. We are seeing terrorism. Last oh, night we had at so they just are Hamas. That everyone's Hamas, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, they had watermelon. I was so scared. They had balloons <laughs> with watermelon on them. How dare they? Like, could you imagine people like? I mean, yes, because you're people. But like, were pe- the people were this dumb in the civil rights movement too? Like, I'm sure. You I'm know. Sure. Oh God, they're on our buses now. You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, anyway. This is- um, no, no, I don't want to listen to you anymore. Um, speaking of people not to listen to, AOC spent part of her preach praising the anti genocide protesters, Columbia, and other campuses across the country, only to later take a picture with the same guy students are currently trying to protest. Yay. Yeah. You know who that guy is on the right here? That guy right there? Uh, it's yes. yes. That's Ed Markey. It is Ed Markey. Good for you. Ding, ding, ding. Colin gets two points. Um, there is the. There's always the macro, and then there's the micro. By the way, every pair of the shades they have on, two hundred dollars. By the way, uh, sure. Gold banded Ray Bans, two hundred dollars. Just saying. You know, uh, I'm sure we all would love to have $200 Ray Bans. I'm sure they're nice. Uh, bring the ruckus to full time nursing home staffer in less than five years. You know, Mr. look, there's Barney. Barney Sanders. I am once again asking for your financial support. You know, AOC, Ed Markey. It's just a cavalcade of bullshit. Um, so, you know, when politicians are giving you lip service in one direction, they're fucking you in the other, is is the point of that. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, speaking of, 
Um, here's another politician, Ilhan Omar, right? She she probably has some words to say about this Columbia incident. Well, considering that her daughter I have, got suspended. Yep, I'm getting that. See, we have, we have had pro-Israeli demonstrations on campus. No, no, no. But, but, but just not, a protest that was not, against Muslims. No, I have, have you not seen, seen one that. against Arabs? No, I have not. Have you seen one against uh, Palestinians? No, I have not. Have you seen against one against Jewish people? Have you seen a protest no. saying we are against Jewish people? No, I have. I have. Seen, okay, thank no, thank I, you for that clarification. There. Yeah. So no, ain't no antiseptic nonsense here. Get the fuck out of here with that shit. Has been. Um. You know, and like you said, right, Ilhan Omar's daughter Isra Hersey gets suspended from Bernard College for attending Palestinian protests at Columbia. So you're at a completely other college, and actions you take at a completely other facility somehow gets you suspended? How does that work? Anyway. Um... But yeah, so you're wondering why some of this might be happening, Colin. Um, well, yes. William I. Robinson is going to explain some of this to you that you might not be aware of, although you being in, you know, of the a a academic sector, you might, you might know some of it. Um, so he writes, Israel has formed a task force to carry out covert campaigns at U.S. universities. Shocking, I know. Um, a major Israeli news site says Israeli Foreign Affairs and Diaspora Affairs Ministries are behind the operation. So in case you're wondering where I got it from, I'm getting it from, from the Zionists themselves. They're telling us this. As worldwide protest escalates over Israel's genocide of Palestinians in Gaza, academic freedom and free speech are under all-out attack on university campuses in the U.S., not just from university administrations and pro-Israeli groups, but now directly from the highest level of the Israeli state, in a story that has been largely ignored in the Western press, I wonder why, the Israeli news website Ynet News, Ynet News, I guess, one of the largest media outlets in the country, reported that the Israeli government has launched what appears to be a wide-ranging, covert campaign to harass and intimidate students, faculty, and administrators into silence. According to the report, the Foreign Affairs and Diaspora Affairs Ministry have established a task force to carry out shaming and pressuring operations at U.S. universities. The task force, chaired by former Ministerial Eli Cohen and led by senior government officials, drew up a multifaceted action plan, according to YNET News, involving political and psychological operations against its critics. The plan aims at inflicting economic and employment consequences on anti-Semitic read pro-Palestine anti-genocide students in compelling universities to distance them from their campuses. The plan specifies that actions taken should not have the signature of the state of Israel on it. I wonder why they wouldn't want their name on it, Care Bear. Um, seems, seems odd, no? The first plank in the plan is described as the consciousness axis. What? Why would you name something an axis? If you're trying to be the good guys, can you? Right. Like the last time people were named uh, the Axis, they weren't good. <laughs> it calls for personal, economic, and employment repercussions for the distributors of anti Semitism. According to the plan, the Inner Ministerial Task Force will carry out naming and shaming by publicizing the names of those generating anti Semitism on campuses, both students and faculty, and impacting the employment. Of those identified as the perpetrators of anti-Semitism, those targeted will struggle to find employment in the U.S. and will pay a significant economic price for their conduct. Uh, what does that sound like, Care Bear? It's happening already. Yeah. So this has happened already. The plan specifies that the foreign ministry and Israeli representatives in the U.S. are in contact with professional unions to recruit them to act against anti-Semitism and exert pressure on university heads. It notes that pressuring employers to blacklist pro-Palestinian students has already happened in major law firms in the U.S., and that if a university knows that the chances of its students finding employment have decreased, 
The university administration will act against those anti-Semitic students to avoid harming the university's ranking. So, so, ba so basically, go back to that. Yeah. Paragraph. Mm-hmm. Uh, back. One. Back this way. There you go. Um, so. I want to read that again. It notes that pressuring employers to blacklist pro Palestinian students has already happened in major law firms in the U.S., and that if a university knows that the chances of its students finding employment have decreased, the university admi administration will act against those anti-Semitic students to avoid harming the university's ranking. So, in other words... Yeah. Um... Students who cannot get jobs due to what's happening or being pro, like they're basically trying to cover their asses, yeah, to keep the appearance of. And these rankings, fun fact: I used to work at when I worked when I was at Boston College for undergrad. I used to work in the administration's office giving tours or whatever. Um, these rankings are a big deal. They yeah. tell you that they're not, but they are. Um, so, so this is just a cover because they can't have students who say who graduate who can't say they get a job. That's part of the ranking in terms of how successful students are able to get employment after they graduate. That's part of what that ranking goes to. If, gotcha. So, to so to give that context to that, so. Yeah. So the fact that if they do, so if they're doxing students, you know, to the point where they're not able to get jobs, that's not going to look good on the university. Yeah. So, so essentially, this is a cup. This is a way to basically be like keep them in line, you know. Otherwise, you know, you're not going to look good. You're not going to present very well. To yeah, and we'll kick you. Company. We'll kick you out if you continue. Like, right. so it doesn't affect our our numbers. Like in the case of, right. um, so in the most high impact instance of this plan of action, the president of Harvard, right, Claudine Gay, and the University of Pennsylvania, Elizabeth McGill, were both forced to resign in early 2024 and late 2023, respectively, not because they opposed the Israeli perpetrated genocide or came out in support of Palestinian lives, but because in defense of free speech, they did not crack down hard enough on Palestinian enough, right. solidarity actions on their campuses. Such censorship right, has in swept... In case, he did it too late, too little, too yeah. late. Um, such censorship has swept university campuses across the U.S., and some professors have even lost their jobs, among other cases, a professor at Texas Tech University who was suspended in early March for his pro-Palestine social media posts and a tenured professor of political science at Indiana University was barred from teaching in January because he booked a room for a pro-Palestinian activity. And I know in Texas right now they're also protesting, I think at Texas Tech mm -hmm. and other places. And I, I saw one of them where they were talking to, you know, they had like, the mounted police, right, which is like DPS or whatever over there, and people were literally chanting, who killed Uvalde? DPS. <laughs> like, to their faces, right. which is good for, good for you. That goes hard. Keep that energy right. up. So, off campus, there's been a wave of repression by corporations against employees who have posted their opposition to the genocide on social media, and Truth That has previously reported on retaliation by law firms against their employee and recruits. Artists have had their exhibitions canceled for merely posting pro-Palestinian messages on their social media. And authors have had their book talks suspended for signing petitions against the genocide. Such silencing incidents are now commonplace across the U.S. Under the heading Legal Access, the Israeli government plan calls for taking legal action outside the law. What outside the law means exactly is not specified in the article. Against activities and organizations that pose a threat to Jewish and Israeli students on campuses, such as Students for Justice in Palestine, it adds that Israel will hold discussions with elements from the U.S. Departments of Justice to map out legal tools that can be used. 
the suspension in December by Columbia University of the campus chapters of Jewish Voices for Peace and Students for Justice in Palestine was the most well-publicized case, but such crackdowns on pro-Palestinian student activism have taken place at many universities. On my own campus, the University of California at Santa Barbara, the administration recently indefinitely closed the Multicultural Center and threatened to sanction pro-Palestinian students. The MCC had put up a signage where students had written messages against Zionism and the Israeli perpetrated genocide in Gaza in solidarity with the Palestinian freedom struggle and in opposition to the university's administration's pro-Israeli tilt and refusal to condemn the genocide. The signage has been removed and campus is conducting a bias incident review based on potential discrimination related to protected categories that include religion, citizenship, and nation of ethnic origin stated Chancellor Henry Yang in a February 27 university-wide email, the posting of such messages is a violation of our principles of community and inclusion. But many faculty do not agree with the Chancellor's characterization of Palestine solidarity's discrimination. The MCC has been a critical site for naming and resisting intersectional injustice in our campus community and around the globe, read a statement released by the Department of Black Studies lambasting the closure. As such, it is aligned with so much of what we do in our teaching, scholarship, university service, and broader practices of decolonization, the MCC's temporary closure deprives multiple campus communities of a public intellectual space in an increasingly hostile and restricted academic environment. Under the heading Economic Axis, Tel Aviv's action plan states that Israel will identify leading donors within the Jewish and Israeli communities and enlist them in a struggle to serve as a lever of pressure on university heads to act against anti-Semitism. This is where I think it's donors. really the problem, donors. right? Donors, 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 donors. Yeah, money. Money's the problem. So Israel will exert pressure, right? Um, sanctions against universities receiving federal or state public funding for non-addressing anti-Semitism on campuses. In the Harvard case, in fact, Wealthy donors withdrew hundreds of millions of dollars in donations to the university's endowment to pressure the administration to crack down on pro-Palestinian solidarity. So you know finally, good. The people like honestly good, good. because <laughs> no, because <laughs> there's no way that donors should be giving that much money for influence at a university. Absolutely no way. Yeah, no way. You know, well, fact, like, well, they were already doing it. So now that in, this is the influence that they're putting down on the table. You know, it's like we're going to withhold this money now. You remember all that money you guys had? Now you don't get that. Right. So um, finally, the explanatory access involves creating a toolbox available to pro-Israeli professors and students, assisting them in addressing claims against the pro-Israel side physically and especially on social networks. The foreign ministry will explain the option of launching a campaign on social networks focused on campuses. This element of the action plan is not new. Training professors and students to repress pro-Palestinian sentiment on their campuses has been taking place for many years. Among other pro programs, Hezbara Fellowship, Hezbara in the Hebrew word for public diplomacy, that is propaganda, are offered to Jewish students at U.S. university campuses to travel to Israel where they are indoctrinated into Zionism and taught how to practice Hezbollah when they return home. Hezbollah offices are maintained in several Israeli ministries, including the Ministries of Foreign Affairs, Diaspora Affairs, Strategic Affairs, and the IDF. The press office to the Israeli embassy in Washington, D.C. did not respond to Truthout's request for comment on this action plan. Um, By the way, I work near the embassy, and there's still signs. There's... Still signs for Free Palestine around. It's funny because they have a double fence. There's a yeah. fence within the fence. Mm. They've had that anyway. But now, like, the outer fence, there's basically signs of Palestine. That's also the place where um, Aaron Bushnell, you know, self emulated So, yeah. and there are people even within, like, I don't, I pass it almost nearly every day or every other day. on the mm. So, like, there's still people still, like, going there, you know, protesting there still, you know. So that embassy has been inundated with signs of Palestine since then. 
you know yeah. um you know so it's <laughs> but but yeah it's just as that aside um but yeah this is just a way to intimidate students faculty mostly students to get in line otherwise you know essentially they they're fearing like oh you know their your future is fucked if you are basically pro palestine which is yeah. fucked in of itself I mean, the university's future, everything. And I'm sure companies are getting the same problem, similar to YouTube. And if you tend to be pro-Palestinian on YouTube, you get demonetized. Funny how that works. Um, so, you know, you can go to co-v.com slash Indie News Network if you want to get around that system a little bit. Scan that QR code you see on the screen, right? Or put exclamation mark donate in the live chat. You can also go to Rockfin and Rumble, which are in the description below if you want to you know, support us on other platforms. But um, if you can't do that, you know, like and subscribe here, share this stream, you know, comment, let us know what you think. Very easy stuff to do.